There has been much hype and myth about the types of inductors used in various wah pedals. Some types of inductors have been given an almost magical status. Some do-it-yourselfers will go through great lengths to make their own inductors, having a certain number of windings around the core, getting exactly 500 millihenries of inductance, a certain DC resistance, and so on. The fact of the matter is, and even according to the original Clyde McCoy wah pedal patent filed in 1967 by Brad Plunkett, the only function of the inductor is to make it a resonant circuit. No mention of magic fairy dust anywhere in the patent that I can see. I recently made a curve tracer, sometimes referred to as an IV tracer or a VI tracer. This simple device can be used with any oscilloscope that has an XY capability. This device allows an oscilloscope to display the voltage across a component under test on the horizontal x-axis versus the current through that component on the vertical y-axis. In essence, this plots in real time a litigious pattern on the screen. Being a curious mechanical engineer type, I thought it would be interesting to see what the various types of inductors used in wah pedals would look like using a curve tracer. So I rounded up eight different kinds of inductors to test. The results were interesting, but not as dissimilar as I thought they would be. The inductor is just one part of the classic inductor-based wah pedal circuit, which must be looked at in its entirety. I do not possess all of the types of inductors there are, but this will give you an idea of the differences between them as standalone units. Now I will test the current production Crybaby, a 70s Italian Vox with original red phasal inductor, a current production red phasal, and a current production yellow phasal, an early 70s Maestro Boomerang, an 80s Crybaby with the much maligned TDK 5103 inductor, a 60s Schaller Bow Wow Yo Yo wah pedal with its pair of 3 Henry inductors, and a generic 600 millihenry inductor pulled out of an old Radio Shack graphic EQ for comparison's sake. I do not possess a stack of dimes, halo, or film can type inductor but I suspect that they would not yield any surprising results. So let's take a look at these inductors through my curve tracer on the oscilloscope and see what kind of curves they plot on the screen. So the first thing I'm going to test is the Radio Shack 600 millihenry inductor pulled from a old uh, graphic EQ. This is what that curve looks like. It's not too dissimilar from a leaky electrolytic capacitor. Next, I'm going to do the old Bystro Boomerang with the LRAD inductor. That's what that one looks like. Now, this LRAD inductor, I understand, was also used in the color sound wah pedals, if I'm correct. Or maybe it was the electromonics, but um, that's what that curve looks like. Next will be the current production Crybaby. That's what that one looks like. Now I'm going to show you the TDK5103, which incidentally is actually my best, one of my best sounding wah pedals. That's what that one looks like. Now I will show you the vintage red phasal from the 70s. I think it's from around 1974 or something like that. The Italian Vox Wah pedal. That's what that one looks like. So, so far like the last three haven't looked that different to me. And then I will show you the current production red phasal. That one kind of has the most distinct kinky look to it. The yellow phasal looks like this. And the Schaller so-called Bow Wow Yo Yo pedal looks like this. So once again, I'll do the classic boomerang from 1972 with the LRAD inductor, 
nominal value of 500 millihenries. The current production crybaby, which typically measures about 550 millihenries. The TD, TDK 5103. The vintage phasal inductor. The new manufacture phasal inductor. The yellow phasal. The Schaller wah pedal. And the old radio shack inductor. I know what you're thinking. These tracer curves don't conclusively prove or disprove anything, but I thought it was an interesting exercise. If someone believes they hear something, they do. That's all part of the science of psychoacoustics. Just as with certain types of capacitors or op amps, some people swear that they can hear a definite difference between two different things being tested, and yet to my ears, I struggled to hear anything at all. Some of those inductors did exhibit fairly different characteristics, so there may be something to the hype after all. Although I think it's largely marketing and folklore perpetuated on the internet and due to larger values of capacitance, such as the case of the Schaller wall pedal. In any case, I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.